Hey folks, this is Martin Solis, CEO of Curb Rose Productions, back at you with another Q&A. Sorry it's been so long since the last one, but it's been a pretty crazy couple of weeks. We just got the new demo out and the Android demo out. So, finally found the time to sit back and go through some of the questions you guys have been leaving in the comment section and come up with some decent answers. Going way back, Binko and Space Voyager were asking questions about the mounted hybrid they've seen in the combat picture. And yes, you're not wrong, that's a hybrid mounted on a scorpion. Hot bug on bug action. Seriously though, in combat terms, that's hybrid war cavalry. They're used most often on backwater worlds, so they're still using a mix of organic and technological units. But even on high tech worlds, you can still find those pure organic units in the prime mover role, where they're relegated to the transport of artillery units, digging equipment, and other placement activities. Further along, Matt asked some questions about unit experience and about cards. I'll cover the units experience thing first because that's pretty straightforward. Units will gain experience from every battle they're in and also from every combat they're directly involved with during that battle. They'll get points for support, more points for being the direct fire unit. They'll also get experience for being fired upon by the enemy. Units can also gain experience point bonuses by destroying enemy units or completing special victory point conditions. Of course, the downside is Experience represents knowledge gained from the troops in that unit, which means the more losses you take, and more importantly, the more losses you replace quickly, means you will actually lower the experience of some units. So at times, you will have to decide between repairing a unit to full during the course of a battle, or holding off so that it doesn't lose experience points. Once a unit gains a level, it can choose from a variety of attributes that the player is interested in. Of course, never fear about this becoming too powerful, because as you advance through the campaign, the battles get tougher and tougher, and those elite experience units will be more and more useful. The player will gain combat cards by winning battles, and again, achieving special victory conditions. Each card will be pulled from a random draw, so that you can get a lot of mundane cards, or you can get lucky and get a string of really special ones. Then after that, it's up to you to choose how to put them into your decks, how many to put them into a deck, and that sort of thing. You will gain combat cards by winning battles or satisfying achievement conditions. For instance, for your 5th game win, you'll get a card. For your 10th game win, you'll get 2 cards. And so on and so forth. We like to think of this as making achievements a double reward then. 1. You get the glory of the achievement. 2. You get a combat card from it. Now the combat cards you get will be decided randomly. So you might get a common card from it. You might get an awesome rare card. You don't know. Now cards come in very broad categories. There are modifiers. Those will be cards that add or subtract combat values, increase combat strength temporarily, overpower a unit, add more dice, that sort of thing. Another category are the addition cards. These are cards which would add a new unit to the battle or fortification or a bridge. They also do things like repair a unit instantly. Basically anything that adds to whatever you're doing on the board. The third category are the rare and powerful game changer cards. These are cards who have the ability to change the actual rules of the game, either for a moment or for the duration of a battle. Cards such as the Solar Storm card, which negates all space superiority, dice bonus, which would add a number to all the dice that you rolled, or even cards that negate the use of all other cards for the rest of the round. These game changing cards can be powerful, but they have to be used at the right time. And that's part of the skill of the game. And yes, there will be race-specific cards, which will be clearly marked on the card. We've been spending a bit of time covering the combat philosophies of the Humans, Tarks, and Hybers game. It's been asked how those combat philosophies interact with each other, and that's a very good question. When looked at it broadly, the Tarker and Hyber are the most widely separated in terms of combat philosophy, and hence they have the most difficulty in dealing with each other. In fact, it wasn't until observing the humans fight the Hivers that the Tarka really came to terms with how to deal with their insect enemies. The Tarka preferred to expend all their power on the tip of the spear to punch through the middle of an enemy line. With the Hivers, that wasn't quite as effective because the Hivers could quickly englobe the intrusion using rear units. From watching the humans, the Tarkas began to use strikes which hit at the side of Hiver lines simultaneously, forcing the Hivers to react and spread out their own inner defenses much more thinly than they normally would, and gain ground. The Hivers, after their wars with the humans, began to realize that fluidity in an enemy is not a weakness as much as something that needed to be compensated for. Hiver tactics became 
still defense oriented, but much more fluid than they were in the traditional hybrid on hybrid battles. In game terms, it means you will see units and ground pounders slowly evolve over time to compensate for initial weaknesses while allowing players to employ new tactics against racial enemies. And of course, I need to talk a little bit about time. There's one week left and we're less than halfway to our goal. Won't lie, be nice if those numbers were reversed, but they're not. So we just got to fight a bit harder. We're not going to give up. We're not going to shut down early and go home with our toys. Ground Powder is a great game and it deserves to get made. And good little games deserve to get made not only for the PC, but for portables, phones and pads as well. We need your help to win this one. And with it, one way or the other, we'll get this game done. You know we will. Thanks and keep them flying.